Hi and welcome back to another video in the Allen Model Railway series. Well as you could probably gather I'm just uh, measuring up this corner here um, so I can start cutting the baseboard to size for it. I shall finish uh, measuring up and I'll see you very shortly. process of measuring up this corner here my intention is is to get a bit more of the baseboard um, fixed into place hopefully get it to go all the way around um, or all the baseboard laid so that I can get a loop of track laid around around it and I can actually get some uh, trains running around um, so I'm going to get the uh, tools and the equipment ready to do that but in the meantime when we go back across to uh, the workbench and see how we're getting on on the building of the station well, it'll be good to get a bit more of the baseboards finished and a bit more track laid so we can get some trains running right round. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest of that goes. What I thought I'd do now is just update you on where I am with the um, building of the station and the next steps. So here are the four sides of the um, station building that you saw me cutting out um, in the last video. And what I have done with the um, side, um, or the, the ends of the building, the two ends, is I've stuck some... A medium thickness card onto the back. You can see that there. So um, I've left a gap round here and I'll explain what that's for in just a second. That has made it much more um, firmer and should mean it's a bit more solid in terms of the construction. I haven't done that to these yet but my intention is to do it. Um, I'm still working out um, at the moment how I'm going to fit the windows on the inside and what my current thinking is that the window will fit there and then the card bit will fit across the back of it. Um, that's my current thinking about how I'm going to do it. Um, the, uh, the reason why I haven't done that just yet is because what I plan to do is to just spray this on with some grey um, primer in just a second. Um, uh, once that's dried, oh, after I've given it a couple of coats and once it's dried, my intention then is to um, fix the back to there. And what I plan to do is, whereas these ones um, I've left a gap around the outside. These will go right up to the edge and then I'm hoping, if I can grab a little bit of card and show you what I mean, that the card will then slot into oh, will then slot into there like that. I clearly need to be a bit more careful. I did leave these for um, uh, 24 hours with some weight on top of it to allow it to stick but um, I used PVA glue. Perhaps I should have used some um, slightly more uh, solid glue for it. Final bit then is in terms of the two um, different types of um, brick arch that's going to run across the top, the header that runs across the top of the um, windows. When I In the last um, video I said I was preferring this one here, the thin brick, to the thick brick here. However, I've watched the video back and seen what they look like in, um, uh, in close-up. I actually prefer this one when I watch the video back. So I think that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to spray up all of them in this colour. And the one across the top of the door, I'm yet to work out whether I want something across the top of the door. I've still got time to think about it. Um, but I was wondering whether it might ought to be the slightly thicker one than, than that one. So this one here. So what I intend to do now is to um, spray these with some primer. I bought some Halford um, light grey primer, which I'm hoping will... Um, look okay as the um, base colour I suppose for the brickwork. Clearly I'm going to paint over the top of it. Um, it's a beautiful day as you can probably see from the sun shining off my face. Um, so we're going to go outside and spray that. So I'll see you in a moment. Well, well we've come outside on this um, beautiful sunny day, ideal day for um, spraying. Um, the spray that I'm using as I said is, the, um, is this here which is a um, Halfords um, primer. Uh, what I plan to do is just give a quick spray of um, one of the, or a spare bit of plastic card just so I get used to it. I have shaken it really, really well, so I will continue to do that throughout. And then I'll have a go at spraying the um, 
uh, the four sides of the um, building just to see how that comes out. What I think I'm going to do is just give it a light spray initially, let it dry for a couple of hours um, or overnight and then um, give it another spray, another couple of sprays and just do that um, till I've got about, um, I don't know, three coats on it I suppose to see what it looks like. So let's get on with that now then. Well, I'm just having a little bit of a tidy up, making sure that um, the bits that I don't need for the next phase, which is the painting of this, um, are put away. So I just put those in, in there. That's the spare windows and the template for the door and window. Place that over there. And here's the bits that um, have now been um, completely sprayed up. Uh, the two side walls that you can see, they've now got the um, base colour on the front and the rear of the um, station uh, that's um, the way the way round these uh, embossed cards should go from looking at it it looks as if it's that way round um, although it might um, you just need to double check so it's that way round this one here I've got a little bit blotchy there so I may have to give that another quick spray in. that's those two bits done and all the windows and doors are done the doors have sprayed up nicely the windows again though probably could do with another little bit of another coat over the over the back of the uh, window frames just to make sure they're all fully coated but I will do that. Um, at the moment the weather's a bit um, miserable outside so I'll wait until it brightens up a little bit. Um, I'll just put these away and the next bit that I need to do is um, practice um, painting the actual brickwork on. Now I've got the um, base coats on. Um, I want to practice putting the um, uh, or doing the brickwork and I've got a spare bit here that I have actually um, fully uh, covered with the primer so that's what I'm going to use and just have a little bit of a practice on. I may need a bit more of that and if I do um, I'll spray some more up when I'm doing the windows. Um, so let me now just put these bits away. Inside here are the um, the brickwork that runs across the top of the windows. So I'll put the window frames and the doors in there just so they're kept a little bit tidier and all in one place so I don't lose them. And stand that there. And it's time to think about um, having a practice at doing painting. Well, when it came to doing the painting over the top of the brickwork, I wasn't sure what colours to use. So um, a couple of magazines had mentioned the um, uh, life colour um, sets. So as you can see here I bought the life colour um, grey stone set. It contains a blue stone, a brown stone, a dark um, sandstone, a green stone, a reddish stone and a light stone. So those are the various colours and I imagine if you mix them you can get various different shades um, of the stone. The other thing I brought along with um, the um, grey stone set with this was this Tensocrum, I think that's how it's pronounced, Tensocrum um, Media, also from Life Colour, that I understand will help um, uh, produce various different shades of the um, sandstone set here. Um, I need to have a quick look online and work out exactly how to use this because I haven't got any instructions with it. Um, but I'm sure I will do. If anybody has a, a decent video showing how to use the uh, desulcrum, please let me know um, and I will go and have a view of it. So that's what we're going to be using. Um, the, these are acrylics and as I say they're from um, uh, Life Colour. I'll just open the box. And there you go. So there are there are the um, six paint sets um, that I should be using. I just need to have a, a practice with these. I think what I will do is dilute some of them down. And my my initial thoughts was that I would use the um, light stone 
maybe light it a little bit more to act as the um, mortar between the bricks. Although on here I'm not sure there is that much mortar, but just a cover over the top of it. Um, and then to, um, again, using some of the lighter colours, I think, because looking at the um, picture, which I will just show you again, unfortunately the picture that I've got, um, the building is actually in quite a bit of shade, so there's some sort of, um, I think, coming from behind here, shining this way, looking at the shadows here. Um, so it's, I think it's giving it a darker colour than, than it would be. Um, if you look at the um, engine shed down here, more small carriage shed, very light colour, um, a very light sort of grey, almost um, white colour there. And the same thing with the um, chimneys here, they're very light colour and also you can see here it's fairly light. What I have looked at though is the bits along here and it does look as if particularly around the edge of the windows and some of this here um, is quite a bit, looks like it's got a bit um, dirty or darker so I'm going to see if I can replicate a bit of that um, as I'm going along. So it's time to start mixing some paints and have a look at it. So here is my test piece um, I'll just let you know what I did in terms of painting it. So as you um, remember, I sprayed it with um, a Halfords um, light grey primer. So that's the colour that you can you can see there. Um, what I then did was I gave it a coat of the... Oh, wrong one. I gave it a coat of um, light sandstone um, as a base colour. And that's really the colour that you can see in between the bricks now, so um, in between the individual bricks. That was the um, light sandstone. It was very light. Uh, I then gave it a, a wash with um, a paint, a rail match paint that was um, weathered black. Although, so whilst I did that, when I looked at it after it had dried, it didn't look particularly good. It had actually taken the um, the light sandstone, sorry, this light sand uh, light stone, um, and turned it back into almost a very light grey. So um, what I then did was gave it another wash or another coat of the uh, light sandstone to bring it back up, um, and that's the undercoat you can see now, um, again in between the bricks. And now what, then what I've done is once that had completely dried, I've now painted it with the various um, shades of the other stone. So I've painted it with some of the blue stone, make sure that's on, so some of the blue stone, the um, green stone and uh, brown stone and the reddish stone. So there are various shades in there. Um, so I just go back to the to the um, dark sandstone. I, I actually painted some patches in the dark sandstone. I don't know if you can see that. There was a a patch here that was dark sandstone, a little bit there, some up there and some up there. So it gave almost, um, I suppose, two two base colours virtually. The main base colour being the light stone and then the um, second base colour in various patches being the dark stone. And I've then painted over the top of those uh, with the various paints that you, I've just shown you. Um, I'm going to let this dry now and see what it looks like when it's dry. I think the next step is going to be to see if I can pick out some of the bits in between. Now what I don't know is whether I like the light colour in between that we can see here, or whether actually what I want to do is to um, give it a very light wash just in the, in the individual bits in between the bricks with the weathered black. What I might do is leave half of it as it is, or do the top half as it is, and then do the bottom half um, with the um, weathered black mining, just to see what that it looks like in terms of the two differences. But I'll need to wait for this to dry. Um, I then um, look at whether I want to give various bits of it a complete, a, a slightly toned down wash, looking with probably some again some of the weathered black over the top of some of the bricks, just to see what that looks like. Um, I hope to get that finished um, fairly shortly. It takes a little while because quite obviously what you need to do is to wait until the various bits have dried fully. And whilst it is um, acrylic and it dries within about an hour, um, I do need to, I, I tend to get it a, a good few hours in between it or even overnight. So um, that's what I've been doing. 
that's where we are with that. Um, so once this is dried, we'll come back and fill in the bits in between. On the new section of baseboard in the corner um, that I had to cut has fitted in um, very well and it's nice and flat and even across the, the whole piece so I'm pleased with how that's gone I'm having to cut it to size and I've now joined up the baseboard with the um, or that baseboard with the old baseboard that um, came out of um, the where the layout was upstairs so that's virtually about I suppose about half of all the baseboards completed I've got one section to do um, which is right down in the far corner over there and then I've got a section that sort of comes across the back of the layout um, and rejoins up with the main um, little drawing station building or station over there. Um, once I've done that I will be able to complete, um, do the complete run around. Uh, the corner um, over there is slightly more difficult. Um, I need to cut out a small owl shape to get it to fit around the edge of the wall but you'll see that in a, a future video. Um, as I say, just about completed in here, not much more I can do um, at the moment until I get some more timber and some more baseboard. Um, I will need to start to get some more cork matting as well so I can get that and get the truck um, laid. So, um, what I'll do now is hand you back over to the uh, workbench and we'll see how the painting's going with that uh, 
a station building or at least a, the test piece of the plastic card um, to see if we can start to match up some of the colours. And I'll see you through it there. So that's the test piece completed. Uh, what I will do now is just do zoom in so that you can see um, what it looks like in a bit more detail. Also, um, as I do this, you'll notice that the side nearest to the um, paint pot has had a... Um, what I've done is give it a small, a thin, very thin wash um, in between the, the various brick colours and less the side on the other um, end, so um, where the L shape is, is, I suppose. That side there has been left pretty much um, without the wash, so the background colour, the light stone colour is coming through. And I'm hoping you can see the difference. So there we go, the left hand side has had a very thin wash of um, the uh, black, weathered black, um, over the top of it in between the various bricks. I've just let it run through. Um, and the side on the right hand side uh, where the owl shape is has been left um, with the background colour in place. As I said, I'm not sure which one I prefer um, as I'm looking at this um, through the um, lens of the camera, uh, I quite like the um, right hand side, um, but when I look at it um, at distance um, or just in normal normal light with my normal eyes, I actually quite favour the um, left hand side where the which is slightly darker colour. What I will do now is I'll just show you it in comparison with um, the uh, trackside hut that I produced. Um, in one of the very, very early videos, and also in how it looks against the edge of the platform, just so you can see the, whether how good the colour match is, and particularly in terms of that bit around the um, uh, weathered in between the in between the bricks or not. Well, here we are. Uh, as I was pointing out earlier, that side there has got a slightly darker wash, mainly in between the the. Um, uh, Brick, so I just gave it a very little um, wash with the weathered black. This side here hasn't. Um, so, in comparison with the um, edge of the platform, there I think you can see the edge of the platform in line with it. Um, it's probably closer to to this area here than this area here in terms of the darkness. Um, so I'm sort of favouring that. Although, when you look at the bricks on here, there is a dark area in between the bricks and it isn't quite so pale. So there's the platform edge. What I will do now is just show you the small building that we produced. So there's the um, building and there you can see, um, I suppose, the comparison between the two. Um, just to try, I'm trying to get the stones relatively similar. And once again, I suppose it looks probably closer to this side than to that side. So I'm beginning to favour this side a little bit um, uh, and leave in the white in between, or the, not the white, it's um, the light coloured brick in between. I'll just try and get a picture of all three of them together. So there, there is all three bits together. What I'll do is I'll lay this down and then zoom back out a little bit so you can get a, a different view of it. And we can have a look at them all. There we can see all three of them together. Um, and looking through the lens again, it does look as if the right hand side is um, closer to both the platform and the building than the left hand side. So I think I'm going to favour um, the way I did the right hand end so without the weathering the, um, in between the bricks. Well, I'm afraid once again that's about all we've got time for um, in this video. I'm reasonably happy with the way the painting of the building or painting of the test piece of the building has gone. Um, and in the next video we'll start to transfer that um, uh, method onto the main building itself. Uh, again, the baseboards are um, progressing. Um, we're about halfway through fitting all of the baseboards as I understand it. We just need to do a bit more wiring up now and um, start laying a bit more track so we can get some trains running around. 
Um, I'll leave you just with some shots of um, how the, we moved from um, the plain white plastic card uh, to um, the painted up plastic card. And I'll see you next month.